All right, morning to you, Lawrence. Morning to you, Kelly. All right, good morning to all of you. All right, let's start our morning MAO right now. Today is the 25th of May, Tuesday. And today, elephant in the room, okay? COVID, inflation, overvaluation. All right, this is the probably the top few problems that we are seeing in the market right now. But really, who cares? Really, who cares? That's the main choice of it, all right? So anybody know what does elephant in the room means? All right. Anyone here? How, you, how many of you know what does elephant in the room mean? All right. If you know it, please, can you key the answer right now to the group chat? Let me hear. Let me see you guys. Uh, you know, that you understand that. Because I promise you yesterday we saw, um, we saw gray rhino. Today we have elephant. Okay. <laughs> no colors. Okay. Just elephant. All right. Tomorrow, any animal? I think or one more or two more at least easily. All right, anybody knows what elephant in the room means? Yes, indeed, exactly, Carl. Obvious signs, but ignored. All right, it's just like you think back for one moment, just like when this uh, Dogecoin was traveling at 30, 70 cents. And no matter what I tell people to take profit, right? People tell me, say that, you know what? It will go higher. You go to $1 and so forth. But actually deep down in everybody's heart, we all know that probably 70 cents was a little bit high because Dogecoin came from a low of 20 cents and has climbed 300% in a very short period of time. It's the same thing when this Bitcoin is trading at about this uh, 64,000. Okay, we also know that it's kind of high at that moment right now, but the people just feel that, you know what, maybe you'll go to 100,000. So now if you flash back, and now think about it and come back to what we are seeing today. Now, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin is now trading at about 35, 39,000. Then Dogecoin is about 35 cents. How do you feel right now? How do you feel right now? That you feel that that elephant was in the room and you saw it, but because that you decided that because everybody just is comfortable with it. So let's just go with the flow, All right? So now COVID. Inflation and overvaluation is right smack in front of our face. We all know that COVID has not ended, but people in America are moving forward. Inflation is rising, but Federal Reserve is not going to care. Overvaluation is definitely on the table. It's way, way above what you should be paying for, but people are just chasing after it. So with all this thing combined, it's a very big white elephant. But the question is, who cares? All right, who really cares? So this is what you can see over here, the elephant in the room, whereby we have bull, we have the bear. But I tell you this, the bull and the bear have no say when the elephant, the cycle is in the room. That means that if the market is just gonna go up, it will not stop here. Vice versa, if the market is gonna go down, nothing cheap or undervalued is gonna be able to change the mind of the bear. So you must understand that this is always happening in the market and it will never change because it's like that. Okay, so if you say there's an elephant in the room, it means that there's an obvious problem or difficult situation that people do not want to talk about. Yeah, indeed, that's what people always do. Now in personal life itself, example, a certain thing that you don't like, right? Some of your friends will just avoid that particular topic because they know that you affect you and that's the point, all right? So the thing is this, I felt that there's another elephant in the room, all right? In my opinion, I believe that the US dollar is the elephant. Now, I, I remember this cartoon, so I searched through the internet and I found this, I, I smell a bottom. So yes, indeed, my little or big nose, <laughs> right? I smell a dollar bottom soon. I know by saying this, it's not right, you're gonna like throw everybody off the track because everyone now knows that the US dollar is gonna go down further. They know that the US dollar is in a very bad position. They believe that the qualitative easing will continue in the, from the US Federal Reserve. They, they, they don't believe that. But you can see from the chart, from the 10 year yields, from the US dollar chart, and the obvious movement in some of the things that Federal Reserve is doing, I cannot believe that there is a bottom. Now it's not the, it's not, uh, it's not the bottom, it's a bottom. All right, that's why I did this cartoon smell perfectly. Now, D bottom is the absolute bottom of the market. A bottom is a temporarily cyclical bottom. And I believe that we're going to see it very soon. And that's the reason why I'm getting a bit uncomfortable with gold at the right moment now. Okay. All right. 
So I believe that a dollar, a US dollar could see a temporary rebound soon. Okay, so that is my first thing that I want to share with you in this morning. All right, then of course, this morning was our watching CNBC. I also realized that Cathy Lian. Now, Cathy Lian is one of the few analysts that I will give my thumbs up. Yeah, because she's very objective. I, I like her in terms of the way she share. Now, for me, it's all right. Not many analysts, I, it caught, their, my, caught my attention. I mean, other than this Cathy Lian, the other one is this Tom, all right? So these two guys, this, this, this two, two person, I really find that they are pretty good. All right, they're pretty good. So... It's quite interesting for Cathy Lian to say this, but she, I think she's absolutely spot on. She felt that right, the Federal Reserve is behind the curve for, on inflation. And um, it's very clear because we can see the core CPI number. All right, the, PP, uh, the core CPI number was already at 2.9 when the market was looking at the lower number. And you can see the way it spiked up itself is really incredible. So in my opinion itself, right, I think that she's right. And I believe that very sooner or later, the U.S. Federal Reserve will have to do something that they need to do. But of course, they can choose another way to do it, and which they're doing right now is a reverse repo operation, which in the later part of today's MAO, I'll talk about that. All right. So before we start this morning, once again, let's motivate one another. Don't give up. All right. Our greatest glory is not in never failing, in never falling, sorry, but in rising every time we fall. All right. I think this is a very powerful quote that I want to share with all of you. Now, there's no way an individual will not fall. I mean, even they're the richest man, you're the richest family, you still have a time you will fall. But it's just that how you recover that really differentiates you from the rest. And I believe that you guys, we all have our time of bad times. But as long as we rise from our falls, we should recover. And when I was doing this, this is from Confucius, and I was very happy with this sharing. Then after that, before we go live, all right, Sister Cynthia sent me another beautiful quote, which I think is absolutely nice. And I think that I should share with you guys. From Sister Cynthia, who I think regularly, she do send a lot of messages to you guys in the morning. I think that y'all know what those messages are. All right, to me is that as long as she's, you know, she's doing it in a good favor and she's doing it in good faith and she want to help more people, I think that's fine. So he who blames others has a long way to go on his journey. He who blames himself is halfway there. He who blames no one has arrived. Wow, wow, wow. How many of you think that this is a very powerful quote? If you think that this quote is amazing, please key the word good quote, all right? If you think that this quote is good or this proverb is good, please key the word good proverb or good quote. All right, let's see how many of you actually do understand this very team or what do you call, uh, uh, what do you call, what, what is it, uh, pretty, not heavy, but you know, powerful, uh, uh, proverb. Now, I think that this is something that we really think about it for a while. And I think that it is really there. It's really not easy to actually blame no one. Wow, to blame no one itself is really incredible. All right, I think that it really, really had to be another level altogether. All right, but I think that if you can achieve to that level itself, right? Wow, it will be so powerful. And that's why I want to share this with you. Now, so Sister Cynthia sent to me and forward to you guys. That's how we do it. We pay it forward because we really want you guys to think about this. All right, because if you keep on blaming about the system, you blame this, you blame that, blame Cal, it will not bring you anywhere. It's just only a way of blame. But if you look at it for yourself from way inside, then you will know that where is the main problem on your trading. So I probably think that this is a very good way to reverse bias on your trading and reflect. End of day is this, no one forces to buy and sell. End of day is always a decision and we have to be responsible for our own decision. All right. Thank you, Sister Cynthia. Once again, thank you so much. Thank you for this beautiful, beautiful profit. All right. So before we start this morning, once again, we will actually now make this disclaimer as usual. Please kindly read through this disclaimer. This is about 10 sentences. Please understand that by staying the next five seconds, you have read and you have accepted the above and you have identified me. All right. So I'll give you 10 seconds right now. 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. Okay. It's same as five seconds. <laughs> okay. So my point is this. You have read it and let us begin. All right. It's Chinese wisdom indeed. Exactly my point, Jasmine. All right. So let's just talk about what are the reasons to stay bullish. Okay, what's the name bullish? Indeed, Jerry, it's always a good thing to do a cell reflection. That's why I do, I do it every day. Now, I may not be the best person, but I'm basically trying my best to become a better person. You know, 
you can aim to be the best person, but I think let's start out with three be a better person from yesterday. So yesterday, who you are, today, try to outbeat yesterday's. All right, you keep on doing this, gradually you will grow. And that is what I see in life, okay? All right, so what are the reasons to stay bullish for now? Let's take a look. Wow, look at it. The Russell 2000 has started to coil above the moving average 50 and 200 DMA. Now, DMA is different from the one we're using, okay? DMA is a normal uh, day moving average, okay? And uh, you can see that the market seems to have recovered from the 13th of May. So that is why you can see the market itself is something to pick up some momentum. Then, of course, the NASDAQ, wow, okay. A couple of years ago, we are talking about NASDAQ going down lower. But I did tell you guys, NASDAQ hit the 95% mark. It may actually stage a rebound, 90% mark, sorry. And indeed, it really rebounded. So that is where I can tell you guys that, you know, as a trader, you need to be very careful with all these things, all right? So, I think, wait a minute, 14,000, 9,700 points. Yeah, sorry, 5% down, okay. So you can see that that is now what's happening. The market's staying above the 100-day and the 50-day MA. So that means that the market's pretty bullish, right? So there's another reason for you to look to buy side for the NASDAQ. And of course, the VIX indicator. Now, I was looking at VIX to go higher, but I did say that, right, we will have some resistance at 29. So uh, <clears throat> it came down all the way to 19. Then that is where we call for buy again. It went to 26 this time round, and then today we saw it coming back into 19 level. So to me, is that is there a good time to buy? Well, I've been saying this anytime from 19 to 17. If you don't mind taking a bit of risk, you can try this 17 or 19. All right, these two figure. Of course, you can buy 18 now, but I'm telling you that between 17 to 19, you can look to buy. Okay, so of course, VIX indicator is a bit of like it's a reversal on against the US. Um, equity market, but as long as there's a reason to buy for something, you can consider doing this, okay? And of course, you saw crypto. Wow, look at crypto from Ripple to Bitcoin to Litecoin to Ethereum to Bitcoin Cash. It was coming down, wow, like this on a Sunday, like a waterfall. And the way it rebounded, it's almost absolutely V-shaped, all right? This is how it goes. This is where money is going everywhere. It's going everywhere now. It's just, it's just going wherever there's money can be made. But this is still not a very good move. I was still have my serious, serious uh, doubt on this particular movement. So I will still say my same thing is, as long as the cryptocurrency Bitcoin stays above 36,000, that is the first support for that. But if the, you had to go up and continue its rally, then you had to cross 43,000. So no 43,000 to go into Bitcoin um, to buy and keep for long term is all right. I kind of feel that it's going to be a bit dangerous lah, in my personal opinion, okay? All right, but of course, our Tom Lee, all right, Tom Lee from Fundstrat, okay, from Fundstrat, Global Advisor, he's still very bullish. Now, this is actually a, an interview done about four days ago, so it's not the latest, but still, his view is still bullish. And you know that he's one of the, um, you know, better analysts in the market, and he's pretty accurate, all right, for time, for the last uh, two years, I think he has been pretty accurate. So even like, yes, indeed, I think Jimmy yesterday mentioned about he uh, kept coining the whole, uh, what do you call stocks that's called epicenter stock because you're saying that these epicenter stocks are those stocks being hit during the pandemic. When he said that it's all right, people laugh at him and say that, oh, what the hell is this? But now everyone is using it and say that, wow, this guy has the vision. He can see it in front six months ago and stuff like that. So this is always like that, okay? So I just hope that he continue to do well. All right, I'll be love to see it hear him more often than not. Now, for the second part of MAO today, we will talk about the federal money impact, the 40 years credit balance, the 10-year yields, and the Vanguard ETFs, okay? So this is in the second half of the MAO, okay? So if you want to hear more about this, you can actually stay on until the end of today's MAO, okay? Now, let's just talk about the global market news right now. We can see very clearly that the US COVID cases have hit the lowest level since June last year, and they are really looking for the memorial uh, day and more people are actually outside now without their masks. So because why? Because apparently uh, the American government in a way in the way says that right, if you actually, you know, uh, have took two jabs, you should be okay. You can go out without masks. So apparently now we are seeing that. But look at the numbers. Look at the way the numbers of people getting hit. It seems that it really is working. So it, it does seem that USA has won the coronavirus war. So, well, well, I really think that if they had done it, they should actually tell more people like Singapore and make us, you know, get out of this thing ASAP because the earlier we get out, the better it is. Yeah, Tom Laser ID. Yes, indeed, Jamie. Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay, so what do you think? 
So let's start this morning now. What do you think? Do you think that USA has won the coronavirus war? If you think that they won, please key the word yes. If you think that they have not, and think there's more trouble to come, please key the word no. Let's see how many of you will have your own views today. Now, for me, is that it's very good to have interaction here because I would love to go on Zoom and then interact with you live. Then that's more fun. At least it's, you know, we can, you know, it's much more interesting. But because we need to make sure these things are uploaded immediately for replay, so that's why we use this Facebook. Of course, Facebook Live is all right. You cannot interact with me. It's one way. So that is a that's the thing here. Okay, so let me see what's your answer right now. Let's interact a bit. Anyway, as I said, um, at this moment right now, we do. Uh, take a video. I mean, we do we do screen we do uh, what you call capture this video and upload to YouTube. But it's always about one to two days later. So this conversation is all internal, which means that right at this moment now you are sharing with me is between because you want to share more with me. All right. Okay. For one minute, I just got to receive a message somewhere. Oh, in a minute, sorry, everybody. All right, so Michael say no, Anthony say not yet, Eileen say no, Andrew no, Philip no, Mandy no, Lester no, Alvin no, Cheng Kit, Cheng Yit no, actually, Cheng Cheng, uh, Cheng Chi Yit no, Ho Seng no, Jimmy say more trouble ahead. Oh, I mean, yeah. All right, so most of you all say no, huh? Okay, so you will trust the numbers. Okay, understand. Okay, all right. So, so apparently, it's how you guys are, are all saying that. Okay, wow. Okay, so. Mm. <laughs> So you guys think that way? Oh, okay. So I, I, I will leave it there. I will leave it there. So I will not say anything further. Uh, I think that, right, uh, we will see the numbers. Uh, we will know. If I say they can really go through the period whereby everybody comes together and no one have any more problem, that means they won the war. All right. If they actually, you know, have problem after that, that means that, right, they probably didn't learn their lesson. Okay. So let's us observe this further. Okay. All right. Okay. So, but of course, uh, while we are talking about the crypto crisis and stuff like that, apparently, right, it seems to be the Fed side, some of the officials are looking to have the digital dollar coming up, apparently. All right. So the thing is this, uh, this particular lady felt that, right, there should be a cryptocurrency to be backed by the central bank. So I was just thinking out loud, what is the, what is the main motive of cryptocurrency? I mean, what is it all about digital currency? Okay, fair enough. But we talk about crypto. The main idea is not to be, you know, uh, not to have it being uh, uh, controlled by the central bank. And now central bank want to come to go crypto. So end of day means what? <laughs> I cannot understand this. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the, that is the, this is the thing here itself that everybody knows that uh, it doesn't make sense. Okay. So maybe they will be that. I mean, I'm very sure one day digital currency will come to our world. And that's why I say cryptocurrency is here to stay. But if talking about really end of day, we just digitize everything itself, then yeah, nothing changed. It's still going to be back the same thing again. Anyway, we are actually having it right now. We're just printing money through digital at this very moment. It's very, very clear that what's happening right now. Okay. So of course, very important is that this week we have is today, we have the consumer confidence and we have our home, new home sales. So watch out for all these things yourself. All right, watch out for all this thing. And do take note that uh, we will have this crude oil inventories on Wednesday and Thursday. We have all the bigger numbers, okay? So let's look for today's first. All right, thank you for all your sharing, guys. Okay, thank you for all your comments. I appreciate that. 
So let's look at the Dow Jones. Well, Dow Jones continue its rally non-stop. Don't you realize that almost every day, the, the momentum is the same. Morning, they pump it up. Then in the midday, there's some profit taking. Then after that, they push it up again. Last half, half an hour, they put it down. It's almost like it's, I can put this thing side by side. Yeah? You can see that almost every time, whenever the market is going up itself, the way it moves is almost identical. How many of you found that it's identical? Please key the word identical. All right, how many of you think in that way? If you think that this chart is something that you saw it like just a day ago or the days ago, right? It looked identical. Please keep the word identical. All right. Yes, indeed, right? Colleen, Eric, Anthony, Alvin, you all felt it's identical, right? It's really very crazy. It's just really repeating it on a regular basis. So what happened again, even the caption, I think they don't even bother to change much. Okay, I was like, I was doing this morning MAO, and I was like, hey, the caption that they used yesterday and used today is almost identical also. So like a bit lost at one moment. Yes, indeed, Dow climbs 180 points, back tech, big tech shares and reopening stock leads gains once again. So what happened now is that they are saying technology companies are okay, you know, because of now the economy is recovering. So tech, technology sector itself is back to normal again. Huh? Okay, they're saying that, right, the reopening of economy had led the advance. I thought the re economy had very reopened a long time ago in their opinion. So anyway, so they are saying that, and of course we have our Alphabet, Facebook, Microsoft, all up by 2%. Wow, not bad, right? And of course, cryptocurrency down to 32,000 on Sunday, recovered back to 39,000. So this shows that right, the market is not really wanting to sell. And I told you guys, the market will not sell until they really want to sell. So of course, we have the airline shares going up, like Carnival, uh, Norwegian, Cruise Liner, all also went up. And also, and of course, Tom Lee says that, right, they should be able to see more incremental data points that strengthen their views. So they believe that there'll be a substantial rise further. Wow, look at it substantial okay so tom lee is saying that there will be another substantial rise soon so of course that is what we are saying okay very clearly is that right if the economy now is here and the stock market is actually higher all right look at me and in the camera so economy is here stock market is here right so if the economy goes up further right then what happened the stock market will go higher right that's what everybody thinks so what do you think come on everybody now, I repeat myself once again, okay? This is what they are saying right now. The, the economy is here, okay? Look at my finger. And the stock market is here, all right? So if the economy goes up, rises, then the stock market will go through the roof. Do you buy this, all right? If yes, please key number one right now. If you don't buy this, key number two. Now, let me know if you key number two, why you say that, okay? Let me ask this question, right? If you think that it makes sense to you, please key number one. If you, if you don't think that it makes sense to you, please key number two and can you explain to me why, why number two? Can you do that for me? Okay, so we have Anthony and Ho Sing, key number one. Number two from Colin, okay, how about the rest? Colin use the word overvalued, okay. Number two from Andrew, hyperinflation. Jerry, number two, um, you know why, why you put number two? Jimmy say market have price in for the recovery. Alvin say number two, can I have the reason from you, Alvin? Now for those key number two, can you come with your answer like why you think so? Why is it number two? So we can have this interaction. Brian, sorry, Eric says, awareness of inflation and ready for correction, time to take profit. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. All right, so Brian, fundamental? Fundamental in what sense? What are fundamental are we looking at? Okay, I'll wait for your answers, no worries. All right, this is how MAO goes. I want you to be interactive. I want to be more like, you know, we talk and we learn together and that's where the rest of us learn together. All right, so I think no more coming in there. Okay, I will take the answer from Jimmy 
All right, a little bit towards my own answer. I believe that you must understand one thing. Stock market is always six months ahead of economy. That means it's short itself, right? When the market hit a peak, usually the economy itself is still on the way up. Then after that itself, right, when the stock market started to pull down, it's because the economy do show some sign of overheating. But it will not hit the peak until the stock market actually falls. That's something interesting, okay? Because there'll be a point where by the stock market when it was falling, right, the price got cheaper, people will actually add on to buy even more at that period of time. That's why you see volume surge during that period of time. But there will be a point, the, the, the thing will intersect whereby the stock market will fall further because the market really want to sell. And that's where the economy hit its peak and no one's buying anymore. And that, that is where the economy will follow through. And of course, after a few months of selling in the stock market, depend on how fast it is, if the selling is really drastically fast, it will hit the base pretty soon. And then where that's where the economy is still coming down very terrible. That's why you see the news will keep on saying that, hey, the market is still bad, it's still bad. But after that, at that moment itself, right, the stock market will go sideways or the base buying to come in. And then after that, the economy is still coming down and you will see a very interesting inversion whereby you see the stock market recovery and then the, the economy is still bad. So you go back again, right? The economy actually recovers back in only in September and October last year. But the stock market actually uh, based out in March last year. So in short itself, right, you look from, it from, from this trajectory, from March to October itself, right, it's about how many months? About six months. So actually the stock market and the economy is about six months, you know, in advance. They found oh, six months difference uh, between them. So that's why, that's why there is the thing whereby when the market, right, felt that, right, there's another few more months to go, at least they feel that another six more months of upside in economy, usually the stock market is likely near its peak. Can you understand my point? All right, I'm not saying that the market is near its peak today, but definitely itself, right, if you ask any economists right now, how many more months do you think that the economy will hit its peak? I can tell you that the most answers were three to six months. And that is the reason why probably the Dow Jones now is basically at this level here. You got my point? Yeah, indeed. Alvin, all right, says that it may test all time high again, then pull back if there's any bad news, okay? Fine enough, that is also your view. Nothing wrong on that. All is correct, there's no wrong. All right, so that is how the thing is. Jerry said the stock money will take profit. Okay, fair enough. All right, so this morning when I look at the news whereby basically everybody is pretty positive, looking at higher rally, see the market higher. So Bitcoin, as long Bitcoin is up, everybody's everybody fine. So it seems like the Bitcoin is the one leading it now. All right, then they're also talking about AK, okay, the... Um, they want to concentrate on more technology side. They feel that the technology will be the one that's going to propel the market. They feel that the technology will be the one moving up. So I was wondering up front, two weeks ago when the technology shares are coming down, everybody is saying that that's the end of technology. I wonder why are they not saying it right now? Don't you find it very amazing? So that is how the financial market works. That's why seriously, just follow the chart will be better. It make your life much easier. If you were to just keep on chasing after uh, what they say, what who say, I tell you this, it'd be very, very tiring. Okay. All right. So let's just go through what happened yesterday and recap. All right, let's do it. Now, yesterday, the Dow Jones opened between the two pivots. So basically, simply put, above OP is a buy, below OP will be a sell. Of course, you need to apply the CCRY and CCYR respectively. The only thing that has gained us was the KSI. The KSI was red in color. Although, although the KSI was down a little bit, but still it's KSI is red in color. So by right, below OP is a sell. But if the market goes above OP, then at KTR plus one, plus two, or plus three, it's a good idea to take profit. All right. So of course you may say, Kel, but end of the day, the market goes up. So your KSI is wrong. So I said once again, KSI job is to tell you what you can consider to do. But if the market want to push, there's nothing we can stop there. Okay. Nothing we can stop there. So let's take a look what happened to yesterday's market. Once the market goes above OP, it went up to KTR plus one. As I said, because the KSI is red in color, you do see resistant at KTR plus one. You can see that it was actually all resistant at KTR plus one for almost half of the day. So that's why I tell you the KSI is actually important. It was only in the second part whereby the cash market opened, whereby you can see now there is a big BNB over here. There's a BNB here. All right, you can see that. And the markets have to basically hold around the KTR plus one before it and embarked towards KTR plus two. All right, so overall itself right okay for yesterday's trading if you were to trade 
um, the cell at CCYR at KTR plus one. If no wrong, but if you look carefully itself, right, all these trade here, none of them has any BNB. You notice that there's no BNB in all the CCYR trade. And I told you before, for KTR trades, you need to have BNB with it. That will give you a better sure bet, okay? So this is something that please remember that, okay? So overall, the market still went up. And I told you before, the market will just keep on going up until the, the federal stop doing what they are doing right now. Okay, so let's us now look at the market and let's take a look for today. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so let's take a look right now on the uh, this uh, Dow Jones. You can see very, very clearly now, the Dow Jones is still above the moving average and you can look carefully, all right, look carefully. Now it is actually now, uh, the moving average for today is 34,182. The MLP for today is about 34,315, okay? So what we have here itself is 34,000, three, one, five. And over here itself is at 34,182. Can you see that? So which means that right at this moment right now, the MLP is 34,315 and the moving average is 34,182. So as long as the market stay above these two numbers, the Dow will still likely have the probability to go higher. Now, of course, to go higher, maybe going for this point, that is the chocolate bar here. And that's about 34,700 plus series, around 50 like, to be around, around there, okay? Around there. All right, so watch out for this particular figure. All right, so that's what I'm seeing for the Dow Jones at this moment right now for the conventional chart. Okay, for the weekly chart, we can see over here itself, we have the, um, we can see that the, there's two weekly black bars now, but the market now today is seemingly staying above it. And of course, if this is gonna continue, we may see the market really going for the all time high level. So overall, there's still no sign of trouble yet for the Dow Jones. Now this is the Dow Jones chart for today. It's very interesting. I know that some of you are asking me, Cal, I don't understand. How come the price is going up and the KSI can be down or red? So I already tell you many, many times before how KSI work. KSI is not a price action based indicator. KSI is a standalone. So it's just telling you guys, if you want to buy, just stay uh, cool with that. You can continue to buy based on rule, but take profit along the way. That is what it really means, all right? So which means that when the KSI is red in color, it tells you to go slow with your buying or your expectation, okay? Now slow with buying means you can buy with a smaller quantity, all right, to make some money still. All right, uh, what they call uh, lower expectation means that you don't expect you to go like three KTRs or four KTRs. Maybe one or two KTR will be a good level to take profit. Got an idea now? That is what it means when the KSI is reading in color. Okay, now of course yesterday on hindsight, yesterday we saw the, the day before, sorry, the market closed above the cash RL. That's why usually the next day the market will go to the high. And, what is a waste is that the market went up all the way, pulls back close near the, clear above the RL, right? So which means that from the closing price to the tail end is so far away. So actually yesterday when the market breached the cash RL, right, we should have bought it and then aim at this point here itself because usually the probability of having it trigger is very high. And again, I mean, I forgot about it. I missed it out. So mm, what a waste. Never mind. Next time we will just look at it, okay, for today if we see anything like similar. Okay, so that is the um, Dow Jones for today. Let's look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is also beautiful. The NASDAQ is still staying upwards. So now the NASDAQ MLP and the MA happen to be the same line, right? Somewhere around here at 13,515 level. So it's still pretty far away. So for the time being, there's no really worry. The 5%, 95% mark I told you before is around here yesterday. The NASDAQ touches the 95% mark and rebounded perfectly above the MLP, above the MA. That's why NASDAQ yesterday have a very strong run, okay, towards that. All right, so we have the clearance over here. So now let's just look at the, 
today's market. Uh, okay, hold on. All right, for today's NASDAQ, it's still pretty positive. It's a new BNB, new BNB. So the high and the low will be interesting. So the cash R, RL and the cash SL will be what to look out for. The KSI is green. You can compare it's different. When if KSI is green, you can see that when the price comes down, right? When the price comes down, but the KSI is green, that's why the buy up or the market cannot go much lower, even though it went down, right? Quite a fair bit, but it rebounded even stronger. So that's why you need to have KSI. So if the market now is uh, going upwards and the KSI is green, that's why the upside is very fast and smooth. That is the difference between our indicator versus other people's indicator. Because we, the indicator here is, how, is able to tell you things that not other indicator can tell you, all right? So today, as long market stable of OP in general is a buy upside, okay? Now let's look at the Hang Seng right now. Hang Seng is gonna open very soon in about one minute plus. So today MLP is somewhere around here. Moving average is somewhere around there. So which means that uh, we're gonna have the moving average at 28,471, MLP 28,430. So this morning we do expect the market to gap up a bit. Lah. Let's see now. All right, so very clearly now, now the China A50 is trading now above the MA200 and also above the MA, it's also above the MLP. So which means that uh, we're going to see further upside lah, for the Hang Seng at least this morning. All right, we'll see further upside for Hang Seng this morning, okay? All right, so we have one minute to go. Let's just cover one more, it's S&P 500. S&P 500 has continued its upside. Now for today, the, M the moving average is 4166. Seemingly new going higher, but it's a new BNB right here. So the market has to cross the BNB high to continue its upside, okay? So for today, S&P 500, you can see right here, right now, S&P 500 KSI is green in color and it's between opening between the two pivots. So further upside is kind of expected for today. All right, Hang Seng and open up very, very soon. I'm going to cross over now to Hang Seng, right, to prepare our trading day. Okay, Hang Seng opening in about 10 seconds time. Okay, Hang Seng has opened. Okay, Hang Seng has gapped up as expected, right? Yesterday we closed at 28,468. This morning opened at 28,483. So it's a gap up of about 40 points, about 40 points. So um, ideally we're gonna expect to see further upside in the the uh, Hang Seng because it's above pivot one, right? The opening price above pivot one. But um, the KSI is still red in color. So if you are buying, just make sure you take some partial profits along the way, okay? This is something that you need to take note of that, okay? All right, so traders, oops, sorry. Okay, so traders, you just have to uh, take note of the Hang Seng at this moment right now because the KSI is red, okay? So we will watch this coming back here again. All right, so let's just uh, look at, oops, sorry, forgot to do DEX. Sorry, my bad. Now for DEX, you can see that DEX has created a new all-time high. It had broke the resistance that I mentioned. So now DEX is at new all-time high. Congratulations to you, Mr. Uncle Arun. Didn't see you for last, last I mean, since yesterday. All right, so MLP for today is somewhere around here. All right, so what we are seeing now very clearly is that, um, Okay, the DAX most likely today will again hit new all-time high. Very good chance DAX will go for new all-time high again. Now, why do I say that? Because with the NASDAQ, if the Dow Jones is still going up the sell, right, it's very clear that the DAX will go for a new all-time high. But again, in this, you can also say that, right, why is DAX going up the sell? Is it because the Germany economy is doing very well? Well, I will say that that's not really a point. It's just money. Okay, it's just pure money that's in the play. All right. Oh, thank you, Arun. Long time no see you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. I was thinking in my mind is that you must be busy with the other project. So that's why I didn't want to bother you. All right. Congratulations to you, Uncle Arun, once again. So we do see DEX around there. So DEX 15,589 is the all-time high level. Close at 15,557. So I'll give a simple 
milestone figure, usually at this type of level, every 500 points will be the key psychological level. So I will just say that the um, for DEX, the psychological level obviously now will be 15,500. Now this should be the psychological level that the market will be uh, looking at for any form of support. So as long as the DAX stays above 15,500, I still see that DAX going higher. But if DAX pulls back below 15,500 level, not only it, cross the, it goes below the MLP, it's also a psychological level in terms of numbers. So maybe traders might even put an SWL somewhere there if you are already long in the market. All right, so that is DAX at 15,500. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that is DEX. All right, let's do China A50 right now. China A50 is still positive, so no much difference over here. Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a bit flat at the opening price, still trying to stay above OP. So we'll see more later on. we we'll just see how it goes and develop, all right? Okay, so we have come to the indices, all side have covered. Let's look at the commodities. Okay, go, ah, go. Yesterday, again, don't you find the same thing? Morning, very, very, very quiet. Then after that, in the midday, sorry, in the well, evening time, go went up by its own. Then very, very fast, came down, all right? And then it gets sideways and then recover again. <laughs> it's the same thing, right? It's almost identical. How many of you feel that this go chart and the day before, yesterday, I mean, this is yesterday go chart, right? and the day before. Do you find that they are actually identical? If you think yes, please key the word same, S-A-M-E. Let me see how many of you have this good memory and you know that they're actually about the same thing. Let me see how many of you remember. Okay, so you can see right now, the people are all saying that, right, cryptocurrency, the upside itself, right, will be still, I mean, sorry, the gold market is still going to be the key point that market is going to be moving up. So let's just look at this exact thing right now. Let's take a look here. This is what happened in gold yesterday, okay? Now, yesterday, gold is a inverse pivot. Now, let me explain to you how inverse pivot work, okay? Let me explain this to you one more time. Now, inverse pivot, the key, depending where the opening price is. If the opening price is here, okay, opening price is in the middle. So what happened is that, right, this is the P2 and this is P1. Now, what will happen is that uh, both of them, because of inverse pivot, both of them are very strong magnet. So in short itself, right, the market will be drawn towards this P2 or drawn pivot piece P1. So what's happening right here itself is like both of them are now having the maximum power to draw the market. And the market will definitely be really doing this, a lot of this. The market will do a lot of this because it's like basically both way as being drawing it, like, like, a, like the both, both party pulling each other, pulling the thing in between. All right, that is when it's opening price is between these two pivots. By logic, because the KSI is green in color, likely the market will close, go towards the upside, usually first, because the KSI is green. So I must remember. Huh? Now, if the market <clears throat> opens here, then it's different. <clears throat> then if the market stay, <clears throat> excuse me, if the market stays above OP, it will blast up very fast, okay? All right, if I see Verso, if it's opening price is here, then it will be going down very fast. But if the market reverse course, then the movement will be attracted towards at least to the pivot. So you can see that in terms of inverse pivot, right? Usually it's not that easy to trade. I repeat myself, usually come to inverse pivot, it's not that easy to trade because of the, the both side pulling effect. So if you look at this now and you compare uh, what happened yesterday, you can see that this really what happened throughout the whole entire day, the market was just playing around the pivot. 
it did not even go to KTR minus one or KTR plus one. It didn't. It just keep on toying and toying and it, like as if that the market is going to go down already, right? Almost immediately go back up. Then it's like going to go up already, immediately come back down. It's like what you, I just say to you because of this pooling effect that's happening right now. And this all these things are already written in our pivot book in a way. And we all know that, right? Remember, I said that. So for yesterday, the only clear shot was here, the KCX where it turns to blue to green, but there was no yellow, uh, no red to yellow, waited about nearly two hours before you see red to yellow and then the price goes up. Okay, can you see over here? All right, so this is what actually happened for the entire period, okay? So guys, so very clearly itself, this is what actually happens in the market. And of course, uh, if you remember what I told you about pivot, in, inverse pivot, usually a very tough day, all right? So if you can remember this, that'll be a good thing for you, okay? Cool. All right, so let's just look at the gold chart right now. But before that, let's look at the financial market. Well, we can see that the, the Hang Seng is down a little bit. Oh, gold has came down. Okay, gold has came down. Let's just look at gold first then. All right, gold is coming off. Okay, gold is coming off. All right, this morning, I did tell you guys to be careful on gold. Have you heard my, take my advice? Anyone shot the gold this morning? Anyone shot the gold this morning? All right, if I, if you're the gold this morning, congratulations to you. You're already in profit position, right? Okay, so um, first of all, let me just take away some of the lines first to make it clearer for you to understand. Now, first of all, the top line that I have, this is the BNB high and BNB low. And I did tell you guys for gold, if the price is to, if the market is to uh, have a BNB, the high and the low be very good for resistance and support. Now we can see something in very important. You can see the last three days, the market has been staying above the Fibonacci 50%. But now the market is breaking below the 50% mark. So what is happening right now is that traders must be very careful. If the market stay below the 50% mark, there should be some selling on gold today. All right. So how low can it go? Well, logically, if this happens, it may go down to the BNB uh, SL level here. If it stays below the 50% mark. So the 50% mark, I might as well give it to you, right? What's the figure for today to watch out for gold? The 50% mark today is about 1875 level. So which means that if gold stay below 1875, gold should see further selling. Okay, 1875 level. All right, that is the first one to watch out for. Then, of course, the uh, moving average today, the moving average is here at 1837, sorry, 1833. So from where we are now, it's quite a bit of distance, so we don't need to really bother by that. But of course, if you go into details, you can even do MA200, and that level is about 1813 level. All right. Now, do know that moving average will change every day. Huh? Every day, it will change. Huh? You mustn't forget. All right. Wow. Not bad. Uh, Carl, Wilson, Eileen, and uh, Vincent. Okay, you guys are, she heard it go. Congratulations to you guys. Okay. All right. So I do suspect that go to pull back a bit today. Lah. That's my point. I'm quite, quite, quite confident to tell you that. All right. Why do I say that? Because I told you about dollar already, right? Yeah. Okay. That's go. Now, this is go weekly chart. Well, weekly chart wise is at the moment not very nice because it's only Tuesday. So we can see some selling. But I say no need to worry until the market comes down here. Lah. So until the market, oops, sorry. Until the market comes down to here, which is about 1837 level, that is the 38.2, then we look at it. All right, that will be where a very good idealistic point to buy if the market can hang around here. Okay, all right. So now we can see that the Hong Kong market is going back up again. Hong Kong now is trading above the opening right now. As I mentioned to you, today is above OP, above P1, it's actually more to the long side for today. Uh, China A50 uh, pull back a little bit. So see that Hong Kong has its mind on its own. Okay, let's just go back to gold. So weekly chart is done. So let's look at our intraday, our this one. Okay, so today we have another inverse pivot for our goal. Wow, another inverse pivot. Okay, so what will happen since the opening price, since the opening price itself is actually also again between the two pivot, so logically, what we should expect to see is the same thing I just said earlier. It should be doing this bouncing around the opening price. 
But if the market is stronger, that means that someone else is stronger and able to push the market down, then something may happen to this page here and this 1860. So I'm going to say up front here, at the moment now, the market is still okay, about $6 away from the opening price. Not say that it's the bad one, but if let's say go do go below 1850, that means that uh, more than the more than ten dollars, sorry, go below one eight seven zero, more than ten dollars from the opening price. Then maybe go has a potential to come down to one eight six zero. Of course, uh, the KSI is green in color, so I don't really think it will happen. But of course, if someone has the bigger power or someone has something they know we don't know, then maybe you need to be very careful. All right. Now, uh, for me, it's tough, right? When I look at this chart here, I don't, I don't like it. And I, if I draw a trend line, if I draw, a trend, let me draw a trend line. All right, this is something that I will draw. This is what uh, I, okay, sorry, this is not wait, hold on, uh. it's not here, it should be here. This is what I teach in the uh, TPTP. All right, today is a sell call on this uh, goal today, All right? PTP student, if you are here with me, go and check your chart. This is a sell call on the gold market today. All right. So PTP students, if you have, uh, if you recognize this, please key the word PTP. If you are a PTP student and you recognize this sell line that I just drawn for you, all right, please key the word PTP. Let me see how many of you are here now on PTP side. Okay, we have Jerry, Alvin, Carl, Eileen, Jimmy, Vincent, Wilson, Cheng. Okay, you guys are all here, right? So you all know that why am I drawing this line, right? Okay, cool. Fantastic. Okay, guys, you know what you do. So do what you need to do to make some money today, huh? Okay. All right, so how about silver? Now this is silver, so likely if gold has come down, silver will not be uh will not be uh what do you call escaping from this. I suspect that silver will pull back down to twenty seven dollars and twenty cents. That is the MA thirty, so that will be the first level to watch. But I think I still prefer it to come down to about twenty six dollars because that will be the MA two hundred. I think this will be a lovely price to buy into silver, in my opinion. Okay, so let's hope that silver can come down to a lower price they can buy. All right, so I explained to you when the silver do come down to this point here, I explained to you why I think silver, this price here will be a good time to buy. Okay, so we watch this closely. All right, last one is crude oil. Now crude oil yesterday went crazy. Yes, indeed. Wow, look at it. I told you guys about crude oil, it's a BMB and the market crossed a BMB point. Crude oil is a buy. And of course it stays above the trend and above MLP. And is even more crazy. It went above the moving average. So yesterday for crude oil, it was a buy, 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 buy all the way. And that's why I think Susan called for buy, right? And he was very confident because everything was all in place at the same time. All right. So guys, this is how things happen. You have to believe what you know and make sure you get use the best out of it. Okay. So congratulations to anybody who had made money on this crude oil yesterday. How many of you make money on crude oil? Jerry, do you make money from crude oil yesterday? Anyone make money from crude oil yesterday? Please key the word crude, C-R-U-D-E. All right, if you made money from crude yesterday, please key the word crude right now. I'd like to hear from you. So, no one except for Susan? <laughs> okay, all right. So if that's the case, I just continue. All right, so I've covered the all the market, all of them. All right, so that will come to the end of the MAO part one. Write the dot, okay, 9.30. So this 15 minutes is about this uh, alternate market views. That means talking about the bearish side of the market. If you want to stay on, please stay on. If you think that you don't hear all these bearish things, you can just move on right now. Thank you for coming in this morning. All right, so I'll come back in about 10 seconds time, okay? If you're ready to stay on, just stay on. All right, I'll be back in 10 seconds.
Okay, so you're staying on? Okay, let's continue then. Now, this is the overnight reverse repo. I think that Colin done a great job by finding out the article and explained to us about the reverse repo operation. I have also, you know, got something for you guys. So we will talk about this. So reverse operation, repo, reverse repo is just basically instead of federal buying, now it's federal is selling. Okay, Federal Reserve is selling and it's giving a lot back to the banks, okay? So in short itself, right, the technical, a bit the more chim stuff itself is the Fed is taking treasury out of the market through QE purchases and putting them back right back via the RRP, all right? So it's a very heavy use of the overnight RRP facility tells that foreign banks are now too choke full of reserve and the banks doesn't have the balance sheet to warehouse anymore reserve at the current spread level. So which means that now the banks are now forced to actually take in from the Federal Reserve. So what is happening right now is that the Federal Reserve is basically making the banks take back. And of course, when that happens itself, right, the banks will not want to hold because the bank doesn't want even cash. So apparently it's now that the reverse, the reverse repo have shot up to 394 billion, even higher than 380 billion to 54 counterparties. Wow, 54 counterparties. So that means that a lot of people, sorry, a lot of land banks now are actually holding this, okay? So let me explain to you in a easier way through one minute, hopefully you can understand this. Let me just turn on my volume. A lot of people. Okay, uh, hold on. Uh. Just give me a moment. Okay, let's go. Let's assume Bank A needs cash quickly and owns a bunch of assets, bonds in our case. Bank B, on the other hand, has excess cash and wants to put it to good use. In such cases, Bank A can engage in the so-called repurchase or repo agreement, which works like this. One. Bank A, which is called the dealer, gives the bonds it owns to Bank B and agrees to buy them back at a later date, usually very quickly, for example, the next day. Two, Bank B gives Bank A the cash it needs. Three, when the time comes, Bank A buys the bonds back from Bank B at a higher price. In other words, Bank A received the cash it needed and Bank B made some money. From the perspective of Bank A, this was a repo. From the perspective of Bank B, which is on the other side of the trade, it was a reverse repo. Or buying securities from Bank A with the intention of selling them back to it at a profit later on. From banks, mutual funds, and hedge funds to even central banks, repo transactions are an option for quite a few entities. In many cases, a third party repo takes place with a middleman facilitating the transaction between the buyer and seller. Finally, you might have noticed that this kind of sounds like a loan with bonds as collateral. The difference, however, is that when it comes to repo agreements, that collateral actually quote unquote changes hands each time. Even if temporary, a change of ownership does take place. Okay, so if you if you understand why it's being mentioned, is exactly what uh what the uh, is is simply put itself is just lending money using the securities as a collateral. Okay, so that's what the banks do. The banks do lend money from <clears throat> let's do borrow money from one another. This is very very normal in the market. All right. So the reverse of repo is the other way around. All right. I Meaning in short it's all right is that they now basically uh get cash you know from people. All right, from using the treasury. So let me explain this a bit deeper with this explanation like this, okay? So in 2019, okay, the repo market blew over, blew, blew out, right? Then Fair Reserve stepped in and they bought a lot of treasury securities and the mortgage bank securities and hand out cash via repurchase agreement. So in short itself, in order to save the market from going out of no money, Fair Reserve came in to buy all the treasury securities and MBS and give cash, okay? So after that itself, when the repos mature, the federal got back its money and the counter bodies get back their security. So the collateral is given back. So that is actually very normal, very normal and been going on for quite a while. But now it's the opposite of it totally. 
whereby now the repo at, uh, assets on the federal balance sheet, right? This reverse, rep, uh, this reverse repo are liabilities. So which means that now Federal Reserve is massively selling treasury securities to counterparties to take their cash, all right, and draining liquidity from the market. So in short itself, right, they are trying to do tapering, but not tapering. This is another way they are trying to do and tell the banks, you know what? I want you guys to do this for me. And of course, by doing that itself, right? Wow, they have sold about $351 billion in treasury securities overnight to 48 counterparties, okay? And that is really something that the bank doesn't want. The bank doesn't want because it's like, I don't want all this, I want cash. So because of that itself, right? Okay, we saw it before. And this guy is saying that right now, the banks are really, really don't want this. They don't want the huge reserve. They want the money. So that is what's happening right now. So it seems to be the banks, uh, the Federal Reserve is doing uh, tapering in another way to cut the banks from using too much cash. So that is what is happening right now. And maybe it's to facilitate Federal Reserve because Federal Reserve are still pumping money in the system. For French, French reason, they are still, they are selling about $350 billion of treasuries to the counter bodies, but they're still basically buying about 120 billion every single month. So it's a bit confusing right now. What are they trying to do? But if you look at the net answer is, they are doing a bit of engineered QE tapering, but in a very different way, which seems to be still acceptable for time being. But the question is that, can they do it too long? No, they can't. What's well, usually such thing only done at the end of the quarter, but very interesting this time around, they come in in the middle of the month. So this caught many people unaware. All right, so these are the banks are now gonna look at it very closely and see how to play around with this. All right, so that's what happened. Uh, Simon, you don't know the um, Dow BNB. Oh, okay, let's take a look. Wow, Hang Seng has just shoot up. Wow, Hang Seng has just shot up all the way. Wow, I told you guys about Hang Seng, right? Okay, I told you about Hang Seng itself today. It's above OP. Above pivot one, it is a strong buy for today. Although KSI is red, you can still look for buy. And now Hang Seng has shot up. And uh, what we have here, uh, China. China is up, no wonder. China is up quite a fair bit. That's the reason why, okay? That is why you guys have to be very careful on this. And also, um, let's talk about Hong Dao Jones, as you wanted to see, right? Dow Jones, yes, it's a BNB, but it's quite early in the morning. Lah. So this one, the impact is not that great yet. Yeah, indeed, it is a BNB. You're right. Uh, Simon? For the minute, huh, guys, some messages coming in. Okay, sorry. Um, Eric, does it mean that Fair Reserve is collecting back the cash liquidity from the market? By theory, is correct. Yeah, by that theory, is you are right. Because uh, in short itself, it's telling the banks that I want you guys to stay stay out from buying too much into the market already, and I also want back my money. <laughs> in short, yeah. So actually, it's not a very good sign, but it's still, it's a, just a transaction between two parties. So just like telling you that I'm holding a purse right now, I don't want you to go for, I still give it to you, it's still money, just that it's collateral. That's why they are doing that. So that's why uh, some people view it as, uh, this is uh, like a QE uh, tapering, but some people say that this is not. So uh, I will leave it there because you only see such a movement when, when they keep on doing this for a longer time, right? When the bank feel that this, this is too much, right? And then that's where things will happen. Okay, all right, so let's continue. As you can see over here, this is the US Federal Reserve balance sheet. You can see, wow, look at it. Keep on going up, there's no, there's no holding back. $900 billion of balance of adding into the system. So now the thing is this, uh, there's no holding back. No holding back. Okay, 
So they keep on adding, they keep on adding, there's not holding back as they're still pumping in. So as long as the Federal Reserve is still pumping in the money, it's going to be very tough. Uh, okay, Benedict is trying to target a certain sector to lose credit. The spillover liquidity is soaked up by reverse. Can continue. Yeah, yes, indeed. This is exactly my, that's why Benedict, you're absolutely right. This is the backdoor tapering. Yeah, that's the right word to use, backdoor tapering. Okay, all right. By the way, uh, Benedict itself will be one of the, uh, our this uh, one of our speaker, our guest speaker to speak to us on the 19th of June. All right, so you can see that he's a very, very knowledgeable guy. He really knows exactly a lot of stuff in the market. He reads a lot. So in fact, I uh, have a very good um, one hour with him and I basically learned a lot from him also. So yeah, you can see from the way he write, right? Wow, this is really unreal. Sir. This is like he out of nowhere, he texts this. Okay, thank you, Benedict, for getting involved here. So thank you. All right, so you guys can see what he mentioned here. All right, so you can see how the impact of the market, how does this money comes in? You can see every time when there's 200 billion coming in, all right, unless there's some selling that they want to do it, if not, it's all right. It basically orchestrated the, all the rally for the S&P 500. So this is how the money is being put in at different stage, right? And you can see this is how the market is going up. So the market is going up really purely because Fair Reserve is putting hell of money in the system. It's not the economy that's going better. That's why you can see that jobless claim is still going, jobless rate is still there, inflation is there, economy is not recovering, but the stock market keep on going higher. That is what is happening because Fair Reserve is putting so much cash into the system. So this is the investor credit and market over the last 40 years. You can see right every time when the credit really hits its peak, that is also where by the stock market will hit its peak. So that means when the tapering starts to really come in, the stock market will fall. Can you see that? Every time the credit is given, the stock market rises, but only when the tapering of the credit is done, that is where the stock market fall. So you can see every time it's always like this. But of course, now we have really insane, incredible figure whereby the credit the negative credit balance is now at this crazy figure and the stock market is at this high, high, high figure. So now the question is this, all right, if this money weren't in the market, then where is this stock market will be? Now, I believe that if that's the case, easily the market would have be at 3,000 level if the money was never there. So which means that now we have 4,000, 200 level, right? So if the money was to taper backward for some reason, if it ever happened, then you can see the market coming down at least to 3,000, at least 3,000. All right. So that is, of course, do you think it will happen? Well, maybe, maybe not, right? Because you look at it, the when it does that itself, uh, when, it, when the credit is reversed backward, uh, look at the stock market, the stock market really will lose at least 50%. Can you see that again? When the credit reverse the market reversed almost 50%. So seriously, is that right? We're talking about where it's happening right now, from where we are now to the highest point, to drop by 50% is here at 2,000. Well, I don't really think so that will happen. Lah. I mean, really, unless drastically something terrible must happen. So I will say 3,000, but uh, by mathematics, it's 2,000. So how many of you think that way? <laughs> okay, so this chart looks a bit scary though, but again, all this thing will only happen if the tapering really comes in. If not, you can just, you know, you can be bothered by this. All right. This is the 10-year yields. I told you guys I'm quite concerned of the yields and I see that the yields are having a very strong support at 1.6%. So I strongly believe that, right, this is where we are seeing signs and inkling that, right, the US dollar may be moving up soon. And the only reason for that itself because there is this so-called tapering that's probably happening right now. And of course, you can see the US dollar chart is almost identical. And this time now, even though the US 10 year yields has came off right to 1.6%, very interesting that US dollar did not come back to 89.70. It's staying at 89.84 level now. So I kind of suspect that, right, the US dollar should be going up pretty soon, all right? And of course, we're talking about whether the market is overvalued or not. You can see very clearly, this is S&P PE ratio. Now, on average itself, it's 15. That's so why you see most of the last 140 years, it will stay about 100 and it will stay about 15. And of course, anytime hit 15, it's a lovely time to buy into the S&P 500. Okay, you can see over here. Then the higher level, where usually there will be a ball of resistance, is about 25. So the last time hit 25, the market got a bit very over, overdone. Then after that, it pulls back down. So this time around, now we are at 44. My God. The average is 15 and 14, okay, right? But the higher end is about 25, and now we have 44. 
we are now at a high back then in 2000 and 2002 and 20 and uh, this 2009. That is where but we have all the big, big movement down. So in my personal perspective, I think that we are really at a crazy level that we had to be very, very careful. Now, this is a Schiller P, Schiller P index, uh, P ratio, sorry. And you can see that on average, it's about 15 or so, 24 for this, all the common highs. Even Black Tuesday happened in 1929, it was only at 30, and now we are at 37, okay, for the Schiller P ratio. So the last time we see something like this was back in 1999 during the NASDAQ bubble, all right? So now we are now at 37. So guys, I mean, seriously, in my perspective itself, right? If the moment that is going to be any form of tapering in any way, whether it's back door, front door, directly, I think that we may see some real selling soon. So that is the reason why I'm not that comfortable to go too many, uh, too much into the equity market right now. I still think that why don't wait for a while? Either you short the market down or you actually buy from the bottom. I think that's a two strategy that you can consider. If you want to trade intraday to buy, sell, no problem. Trade intraday, buy and sell, that's fine. But just don't go too much into this because you don't want to be caught with no money at the time when you really need that, okay? And the last one is this one. This is a Vanguard. Now, Vanguard is a very popular ETF and this is done by very, very conservative traders, investors, fund managers. So apparently, it's not right. Look at, at Vanguard. From 20, to year 2001, Vanguard, look at it. All along, the ETF is actually tapping the moving average. Can you see that? Touching the moving Bollinger Band. All right, most of the time, in fact, all the time. It was only the last two months, last two quarters, sorry, last six months, we see that the Vanguard, look at it, the Vanguard itself, right? Wow, look at it, incredible. Look at it. It basically now is actually trading above the moving average in the middle, and now it's above the, even the upper band of the Bollinger Band. Now, this is very scary because what is looking at you look at it the, the current level now where we are now is here okay where the market ma is around here so this is about 12 percent 12 percent so if history is to prove itself that every time it go too high it will pull back to the same level again whenever it's still too high you pull back right are we seeing that there'll be a 12 percent drop in the market soon well Basically, it is all possible that the market can drop by 12% from where we are. So the market has not dropped by 5% for more than 137 days right now. So is it possible? Well, this is this is what I'm seeing right now. And you know, this is something that you have to be very, very careful. Okay. All right. So that will be all for today. Thank you guys for once again for holding on until this very moment. Now, I'm not a, a doomsday guy. I give you the bull. I give you the bear. I just want you guys to profit from the market and make lots of money for yourself. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much once again for today. I enjoyed myself and I wish you all the best. This is Cal signing off. Bye-bye. I'll see you guys later at 2, 2 p.m. Okay.